On behalf of France, President Oriol visits Supreme Headquarters of the Atlantic Powers in Europe. To General Eisenhower, their Commander-in-Chief, he comes to present the land on which Headquarters stands as a gift from France, which has known two invasions in a generation. In all history, this is the first time that an Allied Headquarters has been set up in peace to preserve the peace and not to wage war. From this headquarters, the North Atlantic Treaty nations plan their security. When war ended, they hoped the United Nations organization meant the end of war. The events proved that only strength born of unity can give reasonable assurance. To that end, they planned. Building up that strength, Admiral Sherman, chief of the United States Naval Operations, flew to discuss naval strength with the Allied Forces commander in Southern Europe, Admiral Carney. Next day, he was to fly back to Washington. But when the next day came, Admiral Sherman had answered a higher call. A brilliant sailor, with his carrier wasp, he took planes to beleaguered mortar and commanded her later in the Pacific when she was sunk off the Solomon Islands. During the past six months, Sherman spanned the globe, negotiating in Tokyo, Washington, Spain and London. We asked much of our great men, and the irony of their fate is that to most of us they are unknown. The measure of their success is that it is not called to the proof. Peace is not spectacular, and in its enjoyment, we forget men like Admiral Sherman who worked to ensure it. In all history, this is the first time that an Allied headquarters has been set up in peace to preserve the peace and not to wage war. It is our prayer that with high courage and with the support of our people and the grace of God, we shall not fail in this purpose. We strive to lift from the hearts of men the fear of the cell block and the slave camp. We strive to establish a Pax Atlantica, under which all men may push forward uh, to new heights, to new levels of achievement. <laughs>